So hey everybody, uh, today I got a little bit of a story for you. Um, I had someone uh, on my channel some time back, and uh, we went back and forth for a long time. He was having trouble with his Camaro, with his V8. Uh, it wasn't running right. And it, it had a lot of symptoms like it was out of time. Um, but he had a number of things and, you know, it was, um, it was not performing well. It was kind of erratic. And I was trying to give him some suggestions on what to look for. And, you know, over time, you know, we didn't really come to a good solution. Um, I gave him some suggestions of things to check out. And I think in the end, it led to uh, his discovery. I'm not going to take credit for it, but what he discovered that he had was a defective um, crankshaft damper. And so we're going to talk a little bit today about crankshaft dampers, why that happened, and, uh, and what they are and what we should look for. And I'll say what was happening in his case was that the, um, uh, the timing mark on a small block Chevy on these Gen 1s uh, the timing mark is on on the crankshaft damper. Because the damper was defective, and I'll show you what that means in a minute, uh, the timing mark for the engine was moving around. It wasn't staying in the same place. So you could set the timing uh, using that mark, and you think you got the engine timed, when in reality it was already off location. And then that timing mark was walking around, and the next time you came back, the timing would be off uh, because it's moving. I'll tell you, this is one of those hard problems. You know, a lot of times we go in and try and diagnose things on an engine, and you really have to burrow in and see what it is that's causing the problem. And um, this is one, I'm going to just say, that isn't all that obvious. So let's get started here. This is, again, I'm talking about crankshaft dampers, and... They call, they're called a lot of different things. And I'm not going to get into the hows and whys. Some are more technically correct than others. But uh, I think the most correct is it's a crankshaft torsional damper. They're also often called harmonic dampers, harmonic balancers, vibration dampers. But the device is normally on the front end of your crankshaft on your engine. And its intent in life is to... Uh, prevent damage to the engine, to the crankshaft, when the engine goes through certain resonant conditions in the RPM range. So, this is what the standard damper looks like. It's a, uh, it has a weighted ring around the outside. It has a hub in the center. And then it has a rubber element in between the two that uh, absorbs energy, tor torsional energy. In this particular case, when the owner got his uh, damper apart, uh, you can see daylight here. There's a gap in that rubber layer where, like I say, you can see you can see right on through it. Here's a better, uh, you know, taking a look. There's that rubber gap again. And here it is on the other side. And here, if you just look, just look at that rubber layer. Uh, inside the red circle there, you, you can see that the rubber is not smooth and it's kind of pitted. Pieces of it have kind of broken away and are gone. Same thing on the back here. You can see that the rubber is cracked and, again, not in good condition. If you want to go look at your own damper, this picture is one off of my engine when I was putting it back together. Uh, that's why the, you'll see in this there's some oil there because I had oiled the bolts as it was going together. Uh, on the front of my engine, and most of the others, uh, you, you need uh, pulleys to run your accessory drive, to run your alternator, uh, power steering pump, and water pump, and so forth. And so there's a pulley that bolts onto the front of the damper so that you really can't see that rubber layer very well, if at all, from the front. Uh, if you just go look in the front of the engine, uh, it's kind of tough. You may have to take that pulley off to be able to look at it. And then uh, here in the center, this is the center bolt that fastens the 
the damper to the crankshaft. Now, what are we really talking about? This is the rough outline of what's called a mode shape for the crankshaft for torsion. And so, uh, the first mode is just, it's just, it's just a twist. So let me try to explain using my prop here. This is just a rolled up towel. But um, sometimes they're kind of effective to... Um... So if this was your crankshaft, and say this end has got a flywheel on it, and this end has your balancer damper on it, um, the engine, every time it fires, uh, every time a cylinder fires, it, it twists the crankshaft. And it twists at different points along the crankshaft each time you have where you have a throw. And you end up with a twist action going on in the crankshaft from end to end. And that's what this, that's what this depicts. It's just a twist. Now, it's not a lot of twist. It's maybe a fraction of a degree. And maybe at the worst, you know, a degree or so. But that's a lot of stress in the crankshaft. And then there's a, a, what they call a second uh, mode, which is it still wants to bend back here at the flywheel, and it still wants to bend at the front, but because of the dynamics, this one's harder to show, it'll also bend in the middle. So it'll twist in the middle as well as at both ends, which is why if you look at my picture here, you'll see there's a node back here at the flywheel and there's another node out here about in the center. And so the shape is, uh, is a little more complex. Now, for, the most of, for most of the time, the first mode version is mostly what you see, the standard bending in the, or twisting in the crank. Uh, this one will come in at a little bit higher RPM. And there are other modes. You can get a third mode and a fourth, and I'm not going to go through all the, you know, it's not a college-level vibration class. I'm just trying to give you some principles. So what drives this is vibration orders, and an order is a fancy way of just saying how many times X per revolution. So if you got a V8, it fires four times per revolution. Every four-stroke engine, right, it doesn't fire every time. It fires every second time. So, you know, V8 has a fourth order, a four per rev. So at 2400 RPM, it has a 160 hertz twist that it's putting into the crankshaft. And it can get as high as two degrees. Um, it, just, it, it just depends. I've seen some things that suggest the resonance for the crankshaft is probably at a higher speed. It, resonance is probably at three or four or 450 uh, hertz which would mean, you know, up around 4,800 RPM, somewhere up, up high there. But that's a rough cut, right? Every engine, depending on the length of the crankshaft and the thickness of the main webs and, uh, and so forth, it'll have a resonant point dependent on the design. And so torsional dampers are put on the end of the crankshaft to try to counteract the resonant twist that you get from the firing and then from natural dynamics uh, uh, just from the the spring rate of the whole drive line feeding back but but basically it's really trying to counteract the twisting that you get from firing pulses so on my Chevy or on this particular one there's a fourth order torsional vibration first and maybe second mode becomes important so your standard factory OEM damper is a tuned weight ring with a rubber element. The factory engineers did a lot, spent a lot of time doing analysis and testing and validation to make sure that this damper would do what it needs to do and keep doing it for the life of the car for you know hundreds of you know at least you know hundred thousand two hundred thousand miles. However, it has a rubber element, and that rubber element can deteriorate over time and age, and that's what happened in this particular case. I'll give you a little better picture of what one of these dampers looks like is, you know, you have a weight ring here on the outside, you have a layer of rubber, and then you've got the flange that bolts to the crankshaft. And I'll also add in that in some engines, 
you may drive your belt drive for the um, accessories could be off the outer weight ring that that's done sometimes and you drive through the rubber um, we also have some designs I've seen where the flange and you may have the belts running on the outer piece but the outer piece is the flange the rubber's still here in the middle and the weight ring is actually on the inside of the design instead of on the outside of the design. But if you might see is that if I have a timing mark on here and at resonance the outer ring starts to turn, starts to move because the rubber's bad, all of a sudden that timing mark may start to walk one way or the other and you think that your timing is correct but it's not and it's driving you crazy. Now how do you fix that? How do you find that? You, what you really need to do with the engine in the car if you suspect that is, um, is crank the engine manually you know with a wrench or whatever with a spark number one spark plug out and make sure with, uh, you know, that there are techniques to get and make sure that your piston is the top dead center. But get number one cylinder to top dead center. Make sure the piston's all the way at the top. And you can look in the cylinder with a borescope. There, there are different probes. There are ways to um, check. But make sure that's a top dead center. And then come back and look at your timing mark and your timing pointer and see if they're lined up or not. That's probably the first level if you if you suspect you got a problem. Well, one final thing I say I'll say is that if you do get into working on one of these and you try to remove the damper and reinstall it, be very very careful. Uh, typically, at least on a small block Chevy, um, the flange part of the damper that goes onto the crankshaft is a press fit, and it's a press fit for a reason. And the bolt in the center has a very specific torque spec on it, again, for a reason. Um, certain engines, uh, it depends on the engine and the higher RPM ones, I mean, I've seen some high RPM four cylinders, for example, where it's even more critical than it is on these V8s, where you know, getting the correct clamp load into this damper so that when it hits resonance, uh, it doesn't loosen up, it doesn't walk around and, and have the press fit loosen up, is pretty important. Now, kind of the last question might be, you know, how much do I have to worry about this? How long does the rubber last? And I would say is that in most cases, the rubber will last the life of the car, but not always. It depends on how your car was treated and how old it is and so forth. When I took my 1985 apart, it had 100,000 miles uh, on the odometer and had been sitting for, I mean, it was what, 30 plus years old. I looked at this very, very carefully. I did not replace the balance or the damper because the rubber looked like it was in excellent condition. It was very good. It wasn't cracked. It, it's, it was there and I checked the timing mark when I rebuilt the engine uh, to make sure the timing mark was spot on where it was supposed to be. And it was. So that one was good. If you live in a really hot climate, particularly hot climate like in the desert, uh, desert southwest U.S. or something, where under hood temperatures are high, the rubber will deteriorate more rapidly. Second is, if you run the engine hard at higher RPM, um, when you get to resonance, that outer ring and the inner ring are moving back and forth like against each other, and the rubber is taking up that vibration. And the rubber will get hot. It will warm up. And depending, you know, if you could find resonance and you park on resonance speed, that rubber could get pretty warm, and the hotter it gets, the shorter its life. So, what's kind of the bottom line? Um, it's something to be aware of. It's not something to panic over. Um, if you have a problem or you suspect it, you know, check the rubber. If you're doing a rebuild, check the rubber. If you got the engine apart. If you're going to replace it, this is my opinion, but I would replace it with um, a factory identical part or an aftermarket part that duplicates the factory part. If you're building a special one, a special high performance drag race engine or you know something different, there are aftermarket dampers that are high performance that will um, that ha may have certain advantages in that operation. But if you're running a 
fairly normal or mildly modified street engine and you want to get a couple hundred thousand miles out of it, uh, you know, the factory engineers designed these to run for a long, 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 long time. And it's a pretty doggone solution. But kind of word to the wise, if you have some really odd symptoms and you have reason to suspect the damper, go in and take a look because um, this one could sneak up on you. Hey, that's all for now.